Hello again, everybody. I'm Dean O'Neill. And I'm Nick Robinson. Nick, we need to make an announcement, quick announcement. We had some technical issues from last week. So our first first, first uh, one we've missed um, because of technical issues. Um, the uh, My card was corrupt that we record on. Uh, it's full disclosure there, everybody. Um, I worked until like Friday. To you. I was even going to try to put up Friday, and it just wasn't. I tried to handbrake it. I had tried to lift it. I tried to... Do all the things you're supposed to do to when you're when you're um, uh, trying to get something off of a off of a card. So we have a new card this week, and just things happen, and that's the way it is. So we'll just move on, and and that's the way it is. Um, tell us, uh, we start a new series this week. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, well, first we did something really weird in worship on Sunday. Right, right, and right. I was going to get that. Yeah, and the and so explain to us uh, before you get into our new ser- series. Ser- sermon series tell us what we did i wasn't there either so tell tell me yeah it was a lot of fun we had a table that we only did it in first service because mm-hmm. it was um i don't know we that's just where we did it right um uh, we had a table in the back of the sanctuary with some some bells on it um that you could ring in your hand they looked mm-hmm. like a a bell on a stick kind of just a sure colorful kid kid looking bell but makes a, a good noise when you when you ring it uh and so we had everybody get one or two bells on their way in the door, and then we sang, at some point in the service, we did a special music where we all sang, Jesus Loves Me, mm-hmm. while we rang the bells. Right. So we, um, you would see three, four bells on the screen, and if you had that bell, you would just ring it continuously while you sang those words, and then a new slide would come up, and if your bell disappeared, you stopped. If your bell appeared, you started. And so we played the chord changes in Jesus Loves Me. Nice. Everything turned out okay? I think so. I think people had right. fun, and it was it was weird and and fun at the same time. It was great. <laughs> that word weird is being used a lot lately. Is it? Uh, <laughs> so um, we're going to do it again someday, right? We, we might. We um, One of the things we're thinking about is Asbury has the tradition of ringing bells on Christmas Eve mm-hmm. as our last song. And people are supposed to bring their own bells and just right. like ring whatever they want. But we were thinking, well, maybe it would be fun if we all played the chord changes to our closing song and uh, yeah, had like a more intentional sure practice behind sure. the bells. One thing I've noticed here in the past few weeks, I believe, um, I, I don't really take hard numbers or anything like that, but I feel like that we've been much busier at church. Um, more people, or it feels like it's more people, especially second service. I, I feel like second service, there's just all of a sudden you look out there and it's like, where'd all these guys come from? Yeah, and we it's fall too, or it's mm-hmm. not really fall outside, but right. school started, right? And our activities are picking up again too. Good deal, good deal. We had the, uh, I know we had uh, on Monday we had the open house. Was it Monday? No, it was Friday. Sorry, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. Friday it was the open house for CMO. Everything mm-hmm. went well that way, I think. Mm-hmm. So, all right. So, our new sermon series, I Am, yeah, and with a little... Jesus in his own words. Jesus in his own words. So, okay. So, explain to me what this is all about. Yeah. So, going back, way back to the book of Exodus. is where we, Yeah, where we first hear the words, I Am. So, it's uh, if you're familiar with the Bible at all, you might remember the story where... Uh, Moses is out in the wilderness and the desert, and there's a bush that's on fire that's not being consumed. And Moses goes over to see what's going on, and the bush bush ends up talking to him. <laughs> he talks back to the bush, and he wants to know who am I talking to. And the bush, God, uh, says, "I am." That's God's God's name, God's self identifying nature right. name. People have found all kinds of meaning in this over uh, history and over time. In John, John tends to be a very theological gospel. So there's mm-hmm. four gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Matthew, mm-hmm. Mark, and right. Luke are all the synoptic gospels. They have very similar content. There's a little bit of difference there. Some things are maybe in different order. You get to John, and things are quite a bit different. And it's there's a lot. The stories are much longer. And a lot of that is Jesus adding meaning and adding teaching around the stories rather than this thing happened. And we moved on. Sure. And 
in these stories and in these teachings, Jesus uses the phrase, I am, several times. We're going to do seven weeks on in this series where Jesus says, I am the something. Sure. I am the bread of life is mm-hmm. the first one. I am the true vine. I am the gate. I am the good shepherd. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the resurrection and the life. All of these uh, I am statements. There's another type of I am say, statements in John where Jesus just calls himself I am and then has like a consequence kind of attached to it rather than a, I am the something. Mm-hmm. It's more of a just I am, like God is I am, drawing that parallel really close. During this sermon series, we're going to look at the I am the blank words. Gotcha. Wow. Uh, I mean, it's, it's a, it it's, sounds like you're delving deep into yeah. theology well, here. Well, and you, you, for John, I think John is a wonderful book. It's a beautiful book. It's also one that invites more exploration because, so this story that we're looking at this Sunday, I think starts around verse, um, 12, 13 maybe, mm. and we're not going to read it all the way to the end, but it's it's probably 40 or 50 verses long total as Jesus um, does something, responds to people, people respond to him, he's teaching on this, he's teaching on that, and there's it's just there's a lot going on, and a lot of deep words, not just surface words. So tell me how you're going to have a parable on everyday life and I am... Yeah, so it's it's interesting because this one of the ways to walk to to walk through the scripture is Jesus is encouraging people not to focus just on the here and now, not to focus just on the physical, but to focus on uh, the eternal and the spiritual. He he uses this example. So this all of this happens right after um, Jesus has fed the five thousand. So Jesus feeds the five thousand. He takes a little break. He walks on water. He comes back to the shore somewhere else, and the people who had just eaten come to find him. And they say, oh, hey, hey, we want to see you again. And Jesus says, well, I'll tell you the truth. You're not here um, for anything else. You're just here because you got enough food to eat. Uh, and then he talks about the Israelites in the wilderness and the manna from heaven and how that bread satisfied them, but it was bread that disappeared. And so now Jesus is this new gift from heaven that is bread that satisfies and does not leave us hungry. So we have this contrast of Two different gifts from heaven, but one of which is real food, like mm-hmm. literal food mm-hmm. that nourishes our body that you need to live, but also if you eat, you're going to be hungry again in a few hours. Sure. And then the bread of life, which is is more than that. Does Is there a direct correlation with um, the miracles that Jesus had had performed throughout his life and... I am, uh, meaning, I mean, is that was was that his way of saying I am? Well, the miracles are signs and wonders, so they're things to show that Jesus is more than just a regular person, right? And John, a lot of them are definitely teaching moments, right? And, and but Jesus is doing miracles all the time for very different reasons. Sure. So to say they're all one thing is probably a step too far, but a lot of them. Um, are teaching things. Sometimes it's Jesus having mercy. Mm-hmm. There, uh, there's just a lot going on behind all of the miracles, and looking at them individually is probably more helpful than painting with a really broad brush. Sure, and the reason why I asked the question I asked, and thank you for bailing me out there, <laughs> um, is miracles are big things. Mm-hmm. And to announce, for God to announce, and for Jesus to announce that I am, that's, I think that's a big thing. And so there's yeah. two big things there. Well, it's interesting to me, uh, as I was looking over this passage today, uh, the mer- the miracle of manna in the desert and the miracle of feeding the 5,000. Like, a miracle is a really right. big deal. And but and we, I like to think, and I think people like to think in general, that if we witnessed a miracle, we would ha- we'd be like, oh, that was God. God is real. God is powerful. Like, we would just get it. If sure. we saw a miracle, faith would click so much better. But here in Scripture, we get these examples of real people experiencing miracles, having food to eat that they didn't mm-hmm. have otherwise, right. and they still just kind of miss the point. They're kind of infatuated with the fact that this miracle gave them enough food to eat and not anything else. They're just, sure. they're just looking for more of the same thing. Right, right. It's a, it's a great way to put it. 
Um, and you know, uh, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but the Catholic religion they look for miracles in to 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 for sainthood mm-hmm. and 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 how that works, and and that's why there's not a lot of saints these days because there's not a lot of miracles. Right? Well, and they. I believe uh-huh. now that I'm I'm dipping my toe in water that I'm not very familiar with. Okay, cool. That sainthood is usually bestowed upon people who have performed miracles after their death. Right. So it has to be a miracle that can be attrib- attributed to the person sure. after they have passed away. So sure. they've done something from right. heaven to to do something. Mother Teresa. Mm-hmm. She uh, well, and she got expedited sainthood. Right. I'm, I'm not quite sure how that happens, but. <laughs> Uh, that's that's way above my pay grade. <laughs> okay, well, um, so tell us how the the whole seven weeks does it does it build up to a certain seventh week uh, surprise, or do you just build up each week and tell us what you're, no, what you're looking at? They're really, I mean, I think the first week is one of the best weeks. Uh, the last one is I am the true vine, uh-huh. and I mean, I'm sure it's going to be a fantastic sermon, but. I, I think I am the bread of life is more compelling than the true vine. Okay, well, but burying the lead we'll, there. Yeah, but okay, we'll, we'll see what happens. We'll see what happens. <laughs> Does uh, um, um, but we're we're doing them in, in the order that they appear in scripture. Ah, so I didn't try to rank them myself or anything and say sure. this one's more important. than This one, I think John probably put them in an order on purpose. Right, and we're going to go with his order, not Nick's sure. order. Sure. Now, is is there structure to his order, or is it just? I mean, is there one? Uh, one part of the scripture where he names everything in order, or is it... Uh, no, it's, it's really interesting because some of them, like so the, this Bread of Life one is this really long section, and then there's one, it's the uh, I Am the Gate, mm-hmm. and it's like three verses long because it's back-to-back with I Am the Good Shepherd. And so there's like two I Am statements that relate to each other, but they're slightly different, but they're like in the same story. Right. So they, they even get kind of different treatment in the gospel itself. I would love to uh, someday uh, put you to the test and say, "Hey, let's do something here. Let's let's look for some some code in the Bible, you know, and 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 find out what 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 this meant for this because yeah. you kind of have done that from time to time, and it's not mm. code, of course, but no. but you've 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 said, uh, you know, th- th- this happens here, and then back." Oh yeah, you know this has happened, and it all it all is intertwined. Scripture is definitely self referential. Mm-hmm. Um, Paul, in his writings, referring to the Old Testament; Jesus, sure. referring to the Old Testament, and so there's lots of these themes that do repeat over and over again. And I think that the themes that repeat the most often are the ones that we really need to pay attention to. Right. Thus, my point. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, there's there's certain 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 things that are mentioned a lot and there's a reason for that uh you know i mean uh, some of the stories before jesus are Mm -hmm. are um, amazing you know and what god did for people and and different individuals and we have someone at church working on putting together a study about the big picture of the bible to try to Mm -hmm. capture some of these themes and some of these major events that uh, we don't we don't have time to cover every sure, week or sure. like I've never done a sermon series on the Babylonian exile, mm. and I don't think a lot of Christians spend a lot of time thinking about the Babylonian exile. Right. I do have a friend who's a pastor, and that's like his favorite part of the Bible. <laughs> but <laughs> right. But I haven't heard too many teachings on it. Um, but having that overarching view of of scripture kind of knowing where the story starts and where it goes can sure, be really helpful sure. in us understanding. Uh, 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 I believe that one of the most interesting stories that I've heard yet because there's many that I haven't uh, is um is Isaac and Ishmael. Mm. I mean that's just amazing. I mean what God promised and kept promises and how these two you know People have uh, have division in the world, and and at one time, and and it, it's just an amazing story, I think. Mm-hmm. And and stories like that, it just because you know, it also says to everyone that if God says He's going to do something, He's going to do it. Not necessarily He's going to do it tomorrow, but He's going to mm-hmm. do it. So so I mean, yeah, I mean, it's some of those stories are just just wonderful to read. So. Mm-hmm. Um. What else can we talk about? Uh, are we? Uh, uh, are you uh, sending out anything for any small groups? Talking, trying to coincide everything with small groups and everything. Well, there'll be 
as always, there's mm-hmm. a study guide mm-hmm. that will go with the sermon series. So be on the lookout for that if you want to follow along in your small group or if you want to do it on your own. It can be done either way. Sure. There's going to be um, tomorrow night. You might not hear this yet, but on Wednesday this week, Wednesday night activities are starting back up. Sure. And so sure. there'll be activities for kids and adults. And the next week is Asbury's birthday. We're going to celebrate both right. the congregation and the man we're named after. All week or just in Just the, on Wednesday night. Just on Wednesday. So mm-hmm. so you'll want to say the uh, next Wednesday. Or yeah. This, yeah. This, this, this coming Wednesday is when we're going to do that, yes. Because this will air on Thursday and then, so this coming Wednesday. So yeah, yeah. that's cool. Yeah, so Wednesday the 21st, we'll mm-hmm. celebrate Asbury's birthday. Right. And Asbury, the man that was ma- named after, can you tell me a little sneak preview of... Yeah, so he was one of the first bishops in the United States that was a United Methodist. He was mm-hmm. ordained by John Wesley and sent over to you know, wrangle those people called Methodists that were already over here. <laughs> but a lot of the, there was this leadership void because our denomination has this really, this close tie with the, um, the Revolutionary War. Mm. Uh, we were Church of England, Anglicans, and that's, we got our communion and our baptism through them still. But when the Revolutionary War started, the priests left, hmm. and so we needed to do something. And John was like, "Fine, I'll I'll ordain <laughs> and send some people over." And <laughs> even though he wasn't technically allowed to, he said, "Well, I'm going to do it anyways." Sure, he sends them over, and they start this and um, capitalize on this major spiritual movement going on. Sure. Um, when you talk about that, it's it's probably one of the first religions, probably one of the first religions uh, coming to the states, right? Yeah, it's probably, uh, you know, John Wesley was definitely over here in the col- the days of the colonies. Uh, I don't know, like, I don't know when the Southern Baptists were founded. Sure, sure. Like, I can't. But but John Wesley is probably the one of the, you know, la- later people to, to start the Methodist, you know. You yeah. know. He's, like, it was in the 1700s right. when he started. Right. And... He didn't mean to start a denomination, but then it happened. Right, right. See, it? pretty neat. So, mm-hmm. uh, where are we at here? Um, One thing we're going to do differently this Sunday mm-hmm. is it's August 18th, which you will notice is not the first Sunday of the month, but we're okay. going to go ahead and have communion. Oh, okay. Because uh, we're going to talk about the bread of life, so we better mm-hmm. eat some of the bread of life. Yeah, that's, the, hey, yeah, you got no. Play, play to your audience, man. <laughs> and, and some scholars say, like, so in the book of John, you don't see like the same Last Supper scene that you see in the Synoptic Gospels. Sure. They say that like this section is John's discourse on communion and the mm-hmm. Eucharist. It's in a very different place in the Gospel, but it's where Jesus is teaching us about it. So since it ties so closely, we're going to go ahead and have some bread and juice together. Gotcha. All right. Well, um, let's end in prayer and uh, be on our way. Sounds good. God, we thank you so much for this day. We ask that you would help us to focus on the things that are eternal, the, the things that matter. I God, there are things in this world that will leave us hungry no matter how much we have. We got some of that's good. Um, we do something and it's fun and we want to do it again. That's great. Sometimes it's things that we chase to the end and they're no longer helpful. More and more money, more and more this, more and more that. Uh, and so God, we pray that you would help us to focus not on our desires, but on your desires for us as we go throughout this day. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. All right. I am... The bread bread of life. Jesus in in his own words. Jesus in his own words starts this weekend. This weekend. All right. See you there. Yep.